Hi, uh, welcome to Postscript. I'm Tom Downing. And I'm Christina Ziders. And uh, we're going to be covering episode three of Miss Scarlet and the Duke today. Yes, so uh, if you are watching along with us, you will have to watch through PBS Passport. So you can go to your local PBS station and find their Passport page and sign up. Uh, You can sign up for as little as $5 a month or $60 a year. The math works out. And uh, and then you can watch Miss Scarlet. You can watch All Creatures Great and Small. You can watch all sorts of masterpiece dramas and uh, documentaries and arts and culture pieces. Nature Nova, the whole works. It's worth at least $5. <laughs> and your donation supports your local PBS station, so do it. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's, yeah. Do you want to just dive right in? Sure. Okay. Uh, my general feelings about this episode were that uh, it's about how the patriarchy kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a theme of the entire show, but especially in this the episode. The whole thing <laughs> is kind of like showing all of the obstacles that Miss Scarlet, Eliza, is facing by just being a woman trying to not starve in this world, essentially. Yeah, and her she's confronted by an individual, which we'll talk about later in this, is, is who is like the personification of like the radical, the, like, you know, answer. Like that, that she wants to, it's she, action driven. To knock through this. Yes. And then that calls Eliza to question like her role, like how far right. is she, how yeah. much is she willing to push back against society yeah. or how much like she's a part of it? How gentle does she want to be? How how slowly does she want to make that progress, essentially? <laughs> yes. So, anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, the opening scene is Eliza in her office, bored and frustrated. And at first I thought, is business just really slow? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, that's a, that's an overarching theme so far in this these two episodes we've already covered. But the door finally opens and William arrives. So, she was waiting on him. And... <laughs> Apparently, he reeks of whiskey. Two hours late. <laughs> Two hours late, yes. Yeah. Which I think uh, you you mentioned that you really appreciated his acting because he acted. Oh, my like, gosh. Like that's he acted, right. He yes. acted drunk. He, he was very. was a very convincing drunk person. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> <laughs> laughing at his own joke, which is just like, no. Oh like, we were God, laughing at yes, him laughing. Just, oh, I, I, something in my brain broke <laughs> because he goes, you're the best man for the job. And then he goes, <laughs> Yeah. And it reminds me so much of drunk Ron Swanson. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that one episode in Park and Rock where he's yeah. super, super drunk? And he's just like, yeah, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. Um, William says he's been working a very complex case, and that's why he smells of whiskey. I don't know. But he wants Eliza to infiltrate and spy on a group of radical suffragettes. Yes. Radical. And 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 it's official business. Official Scott business. Lingard, oh, yes. He, 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 he does. Says. He claims yeah. <laughs> that it is officially a, a job from Scott Lingard. And Eliza's so excited about this, too. She's like, oh, this will be so great for business. <laughs> yeah, she's visibly, yeah, much. her energy level is way up here. His yeah. is like down here. His, like, his is very, like, very I, my head hurts. I need Gatorade, yeah. which doesn't exist yet. No. Um, <laughs> So when she goes home, um, Ivy finds her switching her mother's wedding ring from her right. I had to think the right hand to the left left. hand. Mm -hmm. And Ivy's like, did I miss something like your wedding? And she goes, oh, no, uh, I've been hired by Scotland Yard and I need to go to this women's suffrage. Her name is Alice. I can't remember what her last name is. Alice something. I don't have the note, but yeah. It's, it's uh, Morgan, I think, because I think they call her Mrs. Morgan at uh, some point. That sounds fun. Yeah. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But uh, she she is married. He's a solicitor. They do not have children. They have two dogs. She can't decide what type of dogs it is. Yet. This, this is Eliza's cover story. Yes. She was she, she fabricated <laughs> all this background. Backstory, and we, yeah. and we, were, we were talking about, like, I, I love in this episode because, like, they do this a lot in other shows as well where someone who, who's, who's going to be lying about their backstory, they memorize all the facts and yes. then they just dump Blurt it all, the like, facts all out, out as soon as they meet somebody. Which is super <laughs> suspicious. And I loved how they did that in this episode. But uh, with this interaction with Ivy, though, we actually get to see some of society through women's eyes because, um, well, first Ivy asks if why Eliza spying on them if she supports their cause. But we also find out that Ivy can't read. And if women had the right to vote, that perhaps parents would have put her through school so that she could have learned to read and all of, like all of the trickle downs that come from this. Um, Eliza decides 
that if the group has committed no crime, Scotland Yard has no reason to arrest anybody. And Ivy's just like, yes, because the police never arrest any innocent people. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was a, a cute little peek at society uh, through a woman's eyes. I really like this, too, because you kind of see the the dynamic where Ivy's more of a mother figure to Eliza because Eliza's like, I don't like cauliflower. She's like, you'll eat what I <laughs> yes. make you. Yes. <laughs> so I, re- I love the dynamic. And Eliza clearly respects Ivy, too, and even though Ivy can't read and she's like a maid. Essentially, I, I I liked that little peek into what society has forced upon them. There was a very good interaction between the two of yeah. them. And, and I can relate to Eliza in that fact that I do not like cauliflower. So uh, and, uh, <laughs> I just had some so, last night. Yeah. I'm sure it can be fine. If <laughs> I just, uh, it's just not my choice. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. At the meeting with the suffragettes, we meet Margaret, who is the 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 main uh, woman of the show. She points out that the women in the room are members of the privileged few, that not everyone has the ability to just drop everything in the middle of the day and come to a meeting about suffrage. And uh, they've been lobbying for years, and it's time for action. She's very uh, energetic, mm-hmm. I would say. She, she, It's intoxicating. Like, when you meet somebody who's like, we're going to do the thing, you're like, yeah, we're going to do the thing. She's very stoked and very, <laughs> yeah, very passionate about this yeah. uh, This whole um Movement. Yeah. So we see that par- if we hear that Parliament is considering a bill regarding property rights for married women, and they must go to Parliament. And you see all the women in the room, except not for many. Eliza. Not yeah, there's many. a few. There's not a lot of them, but they're they're all very uncomfortable with the idea of actually going out and doing something. <laughs> Margaret seems to be the one who is the driving force in this, and she's definitely a way more into it than anyone else in the room. You can yes. definitely tell that. I, in that. the and other th- women are, I think, more pragmatic yeah um but yeah she's go ahead yeah she's le- she's leading the charge um, yes she is and so that's when uh someone comes in the, oh, uh, the constable the, yes pc honey church <laughs> i couldn't remember his name yeah. but yes that sounds right and uh, this is uh, he recognizes eliza he does uh, and sh- like pretty quickly and she has to like quick kind of like pull him aside so that he doesn't blow her cover right because she's there undercover and she thinks on behalf of scotland yard and and his reason for coming in was to uh, he was claiming that their their carriages were like blocking the street which yeah. like they like there were three carriages blocking a lane and there was barely any traffic it's, margaret was ready for the theatrics she was ready to be arrested yeah but uh yeah eliza jumps up and she has to make sure he doesn't blow her cover because he recognizes her. And she's like, you've returned my dog to me a few weeks ago. Can we please step outside? And she explains that she's there on behalf of Scotland Yard and he scoffs. Oh, yeah. And he's just a jerk. And when he tries to walk away, she grabs his wrist. I think it's just his wrist. Or, or, or like the or jacket or something, something yeah. like that. But he, that's uh, it's an offense to lay the hands on, on, a, uh, on a police on, officer. Yeah. And then he implies that she's probably touched a few. And I'm just like, are you admitting that the police are crooked? He's just w- bad uh, people. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I think it's it's uh, her relationship with William is, yeah. is being kind yeah. of well. Like he him because, assumes that she's one of his tarts. Yes. So apparently, William is quite the womanizer, or appears to be, or yeah, or yeah. appears to be yeah. with all that whiskey and yeah, I don't know, late nights, extracurricular. He could have been working the case overnight, but we don't. Maybe know. we don't. Know. <laughs> but uh, but either way, this is uh, this causes. Uh, the conflict where it escalates to the point right. where I mean he calls her a tart. Yeah. So she I said she punches him. You, I thought it was a slap, but it was a slap it, with force. It was so, a voracious slap. Voracious slap. Is a good <laughs> yeah. So she she And so she gets arrested. Which is a theme in this show. I, I mean yeah, I'm only she, three episodes in and this seems to be every episode you know, there's she's at least probably some been time. arrested more often than Margaret. <laughs> if we're gonna give anyone credit for yeah. making, making society things. angry, <laughs> I think Eliza might take top billing here <laughs> definitely there'd be a little bit of envy, envy on, on Margaret's part so yeah so anyway so she's in 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 jail or just yeah. at least be having to get she, bailed out again right William bails her out but he's also like a total sexist jerk in the process and tells her to let men do men's work and yeah. uh, implies that she wants him to be chivalrous when it suits her uh, because she's she says that essentially that the man made lewd comments and that's why she had to slap the officer yeah, and he's he's basically saying like the privilege of of chival- it's it's 
I was hoping that William would would be like <laughs> I, I just I just keep hoping that that he'll he'll grow and develop as a character. And this episode did not help. No, him see, at all. this episode reminded me why I disliked him so heavily. Yeah, yeah, that, I, <laughs> like I at the beginning that. of this series. Um, but yeah, he basically says, you want me to treat you like a woman when it suits you and as a professional when it suits you. But like, honestly, don't, uh, doesn't everyone deserve a little bit of respect? Well, like, <laughs> well, and, and she, she comes back pretty quick. She's like, why can't there be both? Why can't you do both? You can treat someone well. And then also professionally, like it can, right. they can well, coincide. She, she they says, don't have I, would, to be- I would never say a man or a detective, yeah. but you are both. And like, it's, yeah, she's pointing out a lot of the. Uh, just the hypocrisy stupid of, of power dynamics definitely <laughs> between yeah. men and women and how the hierarchy is um, and oh and, he, and another point he's oh, talking yeah. he's talking about self control as he's drinking oh, in, that's in, right in the, in the, the self control I was, yeah, I was like he's like, he's like he's, it's all about self control and he takes like a big drink at the exact same like <laughs> almost immediately afterwards I'm like that was really he's, yeah he's yeah, apparently pointed. he's drinking I guess that's hair of the dog he must be doing hair of the dog because he's working a complex case where he gets drunk every night I'm not sure I, I, he may be functional <laughs> I have no idea but it's either way he has a drinking yeah. uh, self control yes self control whiskey yes. Uh, outside the station, though, Margaret is out there, yeah. and uh, she attempts to recruit Eliza as Alice um, to and her, her last cause. name is Morgan. I did have Morgan. Oh, okay, it is Morgan. Mrs. Okay. Morgan. Yes. So she shares that she went to university for chemistry, uh, but couldn't earn a degree because she is a woman. This is like the key thing. But essentially, she's trying to recruit Eliza because everybody on the on the committee is. Middle aged. There's nothing wrong with being middle aged. I'm middle aged. It's fine. But <laughs> everyone's old fashioned. They don't want to actually do anything. She wants some fresh young blood in there. She's like excited that Eliza showed up. And Eliza as Alice. And, and, and confronted a police officer. So, oh, yeah. I mean, like, bonus she's, points. Yes, she's bonus like, points. you're a troublemaker. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> um, so, at the next women's meeting, the constable shows up again. Eliza's like, oh, and, and Eliza's again. still there uh, because, uh, yeah, anyway. It's- well, I feel like she feels she's still doing the job. Yes. But also she's interested. Yeah. Because this is a cause that she believes in. Obviously, she's a female detective trying to make a living in London and nobody's taking her seriously. Um, but when the constable shows up, she rolls her eyes and then William comes in and he completely blows her cover. So yeah. I guess she's not on the case anymore. No. Um. If we find out Margaret's wanted for murder, that a witness saw her saw her shoot the man mm-hmm. on her doorstep and run. And with Eliza being the last to see Margaret before she disappeared, uh, William takes her with him to the morgue where she is told that she needs to write a witness statement. And she promises that she's going to do that, except she we know she's not going to. The dead man's on the table in front of her. And she immediately goes and, to ta- like goes yeah, right goes, in there to like. In. She, to, she's like, "Let me help!" And William's trying to ignore her, and she's just like, "You know how this annoys me." <laughs> so she just gets up because at this point, the, the the person on the table is a John Doe. They don't yeah, know they who, don't know who, who this he person is. is, and yeah. so she's trying to figure out. She's trying to help. She's right. she's really looking for the the. Uh, well, she's she's st- in her mind. She's still on the case. Yes. She said, "You have hired me in an official capacity. Let me help." And that's how we find out that she is not hired in an official capacity. It's really just a friend helping a friend. Uh, but before she finds all this out, she looks him over. He's not a laborer. He's dressed very nicely. Uh, I think she feels his hands. His hands are soft. Yeah, I'm not. So he's not a laborer. She sees stains on his uh, sleeve. And she sniffs it. <laughs> and she's like, chemicals, I think. Maybe he's a pharmacist. She's not far off for any of no, this. She's, she's very astute. And this is also where she points out that that William is always taking the path of least resistance. He's mm-hmm. always trying to just find the easiest solution. Like obviously, the person who is murdered is the is her lover. Of right. Some case place. closed. Like, case crime closed. We're done. Pa- crime but of passion. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's a, Hard words to say. <laughs> <laughs> but there's it's that this is like she's pointing out one of his flaws. And she's, like, trying to show exactly, like, put in the effort and you can find out more about put this. Put in the effort. That comes back at the end. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So she accuses him of resting on his laurels. Yeah. Um, and that makes him very angry. So he has Mr. Potts, who already is upset that Eliza's even in the room. Uh, 
gets Mr. Potts to kick her out. And that's, so. the, that's the coroner, and so she's out on the street. After she's this. out on the street, yeah. yeah. Um, outside her office, Herr Hildegard, yep. I think it's Hildegard. That is what I have. Yep. Okay. Corners her about a case in the Illustrated Police News about a poisons parrot that has just has them so confused, like so complex. Like, why would there be a poison parrot at this murder scene? And I, she very rudely, but not that rudely at all, brushes them off and goes into her office. But uh, at the beginning of the episode, we see her reading one of the Illustrated News, Illustrated Police News. And I was like, is that a real thing? And it turns out that, yes, it is a real thing. And so I did a real quick closer look on that. Um, the Illustrated Police News is one of the earliest British tabloid-style newspapers. And what they did was they would take um, stories from dry court cases and coroner reports, and they would turn them into sensational stories with garish illustrations and like it was basically a gossip rag for police news and this was super it was super popular apparently uh the popularity of the police news was never higher and its reputation never lower than during the three years of the uh white chapel murders and when east london was stalked by a serial killer known as jack the ripper so these were, you know, there were pictures, so people who weren't completely literate could probably still enjoy them because it was illustrated. But yeah, the cover on the one that's on this um, collections items from the British Library has death through tight lacing, and it's a woman being tight, like pulled up tight in her corset. I was oh, like, that wow. feels legit. Yeah. Um, baby farming at Brixton. And Baby chase farming. after a mad bullock. So the, those are the ones I can read. There's one that's just a little bit too small that I can't quite read. But it's all very sensational, silly stories. Well, not silly stories because these were real crimes, but yeah. they made it real sensational and garish and like kind of gross, I guess. And <laughs> and, and yeah, and it's it comes up twice in the in the show. And I was expecting like the the parrot. I was expecting the parrot to come back too. Yeah, and it's because it, this is a these are mystery shows, right? And, like and usually the, mystery is shows. Is the parrot at the apartment? Yeah, well, like uh, it's you always file away any bits of information yeah. as to whether they'll come back later. Yeah. And then spoiler alert: the, the parrot. There's just, no. There's it's no, just a very unless, confusing thing about a parrot. Unless it happens in some like further episode yeah, later I don't, on. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember I anything know. with the parrots, yeah. but um, yeah. Maybe we we'll so. just have to wait and see. It's a really, it's a really <laughs> it's long. Been, it's been a while. Game. It's been a while since I watched the rest of the season, so we'll have to see. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the parrots. <laughs> they get to, to come back. So, but yeah. So anyway. after she she brushes Hildegard off and goes up to her office, and her father's there. The yes. imagined ghost. Her her remembrance her, her of what? imagination. Yeah. Her father's there. And um, she thinks she's that he's there to tell her that she was rude to Herr Hildegard. And, but no, he's there because she was uh, less than helpful with William. And he reminds her that she needs William as an ally. And she said it's not fair, essentially, that she needs to prove herself just because she's a woman, that she's capable of doing this job. And her dad says, spoken like a woman. And she shoots daggers at him. And I love the line. He says, do not be cross with me. It is you putting these words in my mouth. <laughs> so I'm like, imagination. Got it. <laughs> um, and he's there to give her advice. So really, she's giving herself this advice. She's reflecting, but through her father. Mm -hmm. Be logical. Give the men cold, hard facts. That will confuse them. And then he laughs, laughs. And I love it so much. Like, her dad's my favorite character in this first season. <laughs> Uh, so she takes this to heart and she goes to visit Moses to see if he'll help her with the case. Yes. And she sees him robbing a man and uses it as blackmail to get his um, cooperation. <laughs> it's always like a little bit of and, leverage between the two of them. Yeah, yeah. He's it's just playful, like, though. I, I see what you, okay, I'll help you. <laughs> and she basically says she's working for Scotland Yard, but she's not working for Scotland Yard. It's, it's a little complicated. He sees a little he's bit like, of that, so. it's always complicated with you. Uh, but yeah, he really, I, he genuinely enjoys Eliza, <laughs> which so, is yeah. why I love Moses so much. Um, the next day, Eliza goes to visit William, and she shares all the evidence that she collected and overnight. Yeah, collected overnight with, Moses. with the help of Moses. Yeah, uh, she finds out Margaret has pawned almost all her possessions to make ends meet, and that her last name isn't her real last name. Right, Fairfax is not her last name. Yeah. It is 
Davidson Merritt. Yes. Is what I wrote down. That's what I have to. Um, Eliza, well, Eliza and Moses have found that her brother is alive and they find out where he's taking lunch. Like, I guess her brother's the only family that she has that's mm-hmm. still alive. Um, and, and he's at a gentleman's club. He's at so, a gentleman's club. So Eliza wants to come along and right. William basically shuts her down right away. Right. because And she says, you're right. And he asks if he can get that in writing. writing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so not only does she provide the cold hard facts, she's actually willing to just go along with William right. in this case because she's, she's kind of just like she's following go. her imaginary remembrance of what she's her father is. Following her own advice, yes, via her father, yes, which I think is cute. Um, but yeah, she hands all over all the evidence and tells William that she did it to show how much she respects him. Like I just, she, I can just imagine she's just like yeah. I want to burn right now. <laughs> she. Stay calm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and which he, he responds to this very well because he's he's like, oh, okay, yeah. He's, 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 he's taking this he's taking, in stride. He's taking all the evidence because yeah. she's not being outwardly aggressive towards him. I yeah. think he's a little confused. I think it did confuse him. It did him. confuse him. I That's think exactly it what him. Eliza's father it, it said. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so William goes off to the gentleman's club, and um, at the club, her Margaret's brother refuses to talk to William until he threatens to arrest him in the club. And we find out that Margaret shamed the family. Uh, She gave away a lot of money to that damned group. So he cut off um, her allowance, which I was like, a a full-grown woman with an allowance. Like, I already hate this. I'm still on Margaret's side. Uh, she filed legal action against the gentlemen's club. So we find out she has like a very long vendetta. She has a chip on her shoulder against yeah, the gentlemen's this, club. It's the Brownlee. Yeah, the Brownlee is the name of the club. Uh, for not allowing in women members. And she actually fought, physically fought her dad trying to get to the club so that she could demand entry for women. So we find out that she's maybe she's violent. a firecracker. Yeah. Uh, but maybe, I mean, it's not fair. So... I'm still this, like yeah. I'm still like Margaret might just be an angry woman, and women are allowed to be angry sometimes. Just, okay, justifiably angry, right. In this case, yeah. But it isn't. It is unjust. <laughs> but then we then we then we find then, out. Then we go to Eliza's office, where and Margaret's Mar- waiting for her right behind the door, like mm-hmm. with a pistol. Yep, and she aims it straight at um, Eliza's head. And Eliza, first, she says. Um, William's just outside or he's expecting me. He's meeting me here. I can't remember exactly what it is, but she lies about William's whereabouts. And Mar- um, Margaret definitely says like, she says, no, he's at the club with my brother. So she's so. keeping tabs on her brother and the goings on there too. And, this and is, Eliza. This is, where we get, <laughs> this is where we get like a little bit of a clue in that, that Margaret is really like kind of orchestrating a, or at least keeping tabs there, on a lot yeah. that's going on right she, here. She's, she is, um, she's aware. She's aware. Um, Eliza asks who the man outside her house was the dead man. And obviously she doesn't answer. She just says, just one of the many who tried to beat me into submission. And she shows her a bruise on her wrist to back it up. And I'm like, okay, so maybe she is justifiably angry still. Uh, Margaret knows that she will hang for killing the man, but she wants no man to forget the words she'll cry out from Parliament Square, votes for women. Mm -hmm. And she tries to recruit Eliza basically to this protest and get her involved. But Eliza refuses. But she basically says, I won't tell anybody you were here. I won't tell anybody your plan. So at this point, I think we'll take a really quick break. And when we come back, we will talk about William's visit with Eliza, where she's just very distracted. Yes. Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, William has actually used the evidence that Eliza has collected for him kindly. And he's there to give her an update, which actually I guess I should give him credit for. Because he is keeping her updated on the case that she did all this work for. All the work. So He even gave her a well um, done I'm going to be very, yes, that's true. He did say well done. Which I think she really well, well, enjoyed. <laughs> I think she did, yeah. yeah it's a rarity. Yeah. So so we'll give him, uh, the bar is very low, but we'll give him credit for that. Uh, so he's there to update her, but she's very distracted. And he knows something isn't, and, like she's she knows something and she's not telling him. And she's conflicted because she wants to tell him the truth. 
but she doesn't want to tell the, him the truth because she she said that she doesn't want to like she, she wants to support the suffrages the right. movement right 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 she I mean she still believes in Margaret, Margaret. Yeah. she she believes that she's an abused woman she doesn't believe that she's actually aggressive or or abusive Although, well or, she did I mean kill, she did kill someone <laughs> I know but let's let let's put this in perspective um Moses wanted to murder her too True. and now they're friends so <laughs> okay. it's okay. complicated Touché. With, Touché. Yeah. With, with Eliza <laughs> But she she believes in the suffrage movement. She doesn't want to interfere with possible progress for women. And she believes that that Margaret was acting in self defense. Yes, to a certain degree. I, I believe she truly believes that Margaret's just doing the best she can with the card she's been dealt. Yes. <laughs> um, but she she blames like, are you distracted? She's like, no, no, okay, start again. And he shares that Margaret is aggressive per her brother's description. Yeah. Um, and that. He wants Eliza's help to interview the women's group because I guess it's not considered correct for a man to interrogate a woman. I'm I'm not sure. He's a police officer. You would think they'd probably talk to women before, but he wants her help. And um, that's when Ivy interrupts and says that a messenger messenger has arrived for William. And before they before oh. he goes downstairs, isn't there like that that whole like she's not going to get paid because of the job's not done and there's like a fee oh, whole situation? Right, right, right. Like she there's a little she, leverage. That's right. That's right. Was she that, wants. She asks been, to be. T- I think she does ask to be taken off the case. Yeah. And he says. Yeah, because she's so uncomfortable. She right. wants to be done with it. Yeah. She just wants out of it. And he yeah. says, well, you haven't completed the work. She's like, I did complete the yeah. work. <laughs> Gave so you an entire, moved, you know, he's moved folder the goal full post. of information. Yeah. And he's not paying her unless she helps. It's kind of blackmail too. He yeah. won't pay her unless she helps to interview these women. Um, but yes, you're right. That I think that does happen in this conversation. Yeah. Too. And then William goes downstairs. Yes. And, um. Ivy says, it's not really a messenger for you. There's a man at the door for Eliza, and he doesn't seem like the type we normally interact with, essentially. Like, he seems dangerous. Yeah. Uh, So I'm like, it's Moses. It's Moses. (laughs) And so the door opens. It's It's Moses. It's just Moses. It's just Moses. (laughs) And he's there for payment. Yeah. And uh, William, I mean, he is. He did a job for Eliza. That's all the evidence that was passed over to, to William. Um, William pays Moses and then pays him in air quotes to stay away from Eliza. Two coins, one yes. for the payment, one to stay away. This and is what she owes you. Yeah. And there's like daggers between the two of yeah, them. They don't like each other. No. Uh, rightly so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Moses says, I don't think she would like you deciding who she sees and who she does not. Point for Moses. And I'm just like, that, 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 yes, that yes. is a true fact. Yes. She would not like that, William, and you know it. Um, but so William basically counters with being a female detective is hard enough without someone like you. When he reveals that he actually ruining knows. Ruining his reputation. At first I'm like, oh, no, is William also a racist? But no. It's, it's, it's because William has actually done the the, the legwork. He put, yeah. actually put some effort in and actually, yeah. you know, knows, he knows who Moses is. He is, knows is, his rap sheet. Exactly. He knows that he's wanted for theft, fraud, extortion probably. I can't remember everything that he's <laughs> he listed, but uh, Moses, list. is, Moses is flattered yeah, that he's little. taken such yeah. an interest in him. <laughs> uh, William tells Moses to leave. Um, But before he does, Moses lays one of the coins on the table, the one that says, don't come back. Yeah. And he leaves. And I was (laughs) just like. Very pointedly. Eye contact. It's down. Yeah. And then he leaves. So they don't like each other. Uh, And so that's established now. At the station, because Eliza has to help in order to get paid. She's interviewing uh, the members. Yes, she is interviewing Flora Mountford, who is now Mrs. Mountford for her uh, because Eliza lied to her. Like, this poor woman is just being... So Eliza lied to her. Margaret's wanted for murder. Her whole group is just embroiled in this scandal for for no good reason. Which, again, the group's cause is just. It's just mm-hmm. Margaret is an extremist. Yes, and <laughs> Margaret so, is leading like, the charge. Yeah, yeah. In, a, in a direction that it really shouldn't be. It's, right. She's undermining... In her fervor, she's undermining the, 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 the real... The, the know, cause, the, the actual cause. cause. Yes. Yeah, it's just distracting from the cause, yes. essentially. Um, F- Flora refuses to talk to Eliza. She'll only talk to a real police officer. Peace, is it PC Honeychurch? Honeychurch is still there. It's, 
sniffling in the background. Uh, yeah, at one just, point, Eliza's like, "Is there something wrong with your sinuses?" <laughs> and, and, and at this point, like, you're like, sh- like both, both are people, uh, Honeychurch and and uh, they're they're both Flora, like yeah. Yeah, Flora are both very dismissive of Eliza, yeah. and then Eliza turns it around. She's just like, "I am fed up. I'm done being nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna discard my father's advice." I'm just gonna be aggressive now. Yeah. She uses her relationship with with William with to to kind of twist it with PC Honeychurch, and because PC Honeychurch like, knows, he you knows know, now. Now that he comes around, and then Flora as well, because yeah, because the, she the threatens whole, to detain her overnight. <laughs> the whole <laughs> dynamic she, shifts. So yeah, and this is also where we get to see that yeah, okay, so. Flora is a little old fashioned because she says, are you trying to dragoon me? (laughs) And Eliza says, if I knew what that meant, uh, that would be helpful. I assume it is intimidate and is just an old fashioned way of saying intimidate. And Flora looks very shut down. And so now Eliza has taken her power back and um, Flora will talk to her. And we find out during the conversation that, there was a disagreement between Flora and Margaret over who would receive oh, the, the group's the donations. Funds. Yeah, the donations. And this is how we kind of start to put pieces together. Um, William shares that Margaret was expelled from trans- Chancery College, yep. which is something that he learned from uh, Margaret's brother. And Eliza says that's the organization that Margaret wanted to donate to. So we know curious. there's something strange here. Yeah. So they go to the college, and we find out that Margaret never finished her degree. She was expelled Mm -hmm. from the college for immoral conduct with her professor, Dr. Gill. Professor Gill. Eliza points out that the professor was never reprimanded. He continued to teach, and I was like, yeah, Uh, yeah, okay. We're pointing out all of these valid points of why (laughs) Margaret might be an angry woman. Yeah. Um, and then William asks if he could see Dr. Gill and he's directed to a photograph on the wall and he's like, no, I, I meant in person. Like, can we speak with him? And Eliza notices that the, the, yes, Eliza immediately gets up to go look at the photograph and, uh, we find out the doctor hasn't been in. (laughs) Because, (laughs) because because he's the victim. (laughs) He's the dead man. (laughs) He's the dead man (laughs) that they haven't. He's the John Doe. Yeah. Um, so they're on to something here. They finally, they have identified the doctor uh, and now they know where his apartment is. So they go to his ap- his apartment and they start digging around. It doesn't take William long to find out that there is bomb building uh, materials in the apartment. There's 30 bottles of angina tablets with the ingredient being nitroglycerin. Mm-hmm. And Eliza, well, they're like, well, this is strange. It's like he's building a bomb. And then Eliza spots the votes for women flyer. Yeah. And she's like, oh, no, it's Margaret. This is when she comes clean. This is, this is a terrible thing that I've been holding from you. Yes, she comes clean. And and and, and William is is really, really mad. Oh, yeah. He, he says, he says well, you trust— Well, first he's so calm, and she doesn't like that. Oh, that is true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the calmness is what's scaring Eliza she's like, in this. Uh, this is not normal for you. I'd prefer you yell at me. <laughs> yeah. So he slams, um, I think— um, Oh my gosh! What he, is he it called? You up light up. it on fire, yeah. and then you can see things. Lantern. Yes, lantern. He throws a lantern <laughs> inside, and then he's he's. You trusted a liar over me. He is very, he's very, very, very mad. Yeah. Yes, I mean, and Eliza comes back with her counterpoint, which I'm sure William just doesn't even care about. But Margaret was saying things that spoke to her soul because she's yeah. up against the same struggle. She's frustrated. She wants action. She thinks women should vote. Women should be able to own property. Women should be able to do what they want, like a man can Women do. should be able to be detectives. Yes. Un, un, you know. They should go to school. Yes. Like it should, women should not be thought of as like not worthy of teaching them how to read sort of thing. Like it's just. There's so much. There's so much. I get why she wanted to trust Margaret. Um, but then she goes, wait, she knew, sh- she knew I was going to tell you. This is where so, there's a few leaps here that I, yeah. as a viewer, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? And then, yeah. Uh, so basically they, they have, they have to work together. Um, we flash to Margaret, uh, dressed as a maid. She's in the Brownlee's Gentlemen's Club. Yes. Like she has a real vendetta about against this club. She mentions the club several times too. Yeah. 
Earlier in the episode, when she's cornered Eliza in her office, she mentions the club several times and like she's real mad she's at this focused club. on this this is like a fixation yes for her. yeah so she's in the club disguised as a maid she's told not to fraternize with the male employees because they have important work to do it's just like very condescending um but she gets into a room and there's a fireplace she opens up her i don't know she like, had like a little a basket with her and she, yeah, she, she pulled so some cloths well, maids off required it. to like bring their own supplies uh, maybe she's seems like changing odd... linens or something like that maybe. i'm not sure but it was something know. like that she moved to the she side moved, she moved some rags over there's her bomb a very sophisticated looking bomb yeah, where she takes a pin, she takes a pin out that starts ticking through yeah so definitely a time bomb of sorts she, she closes it she places well i guess she wants to get out yeah <laughs> She places it in the fireplace, but... Covers it up with some logs, and right at that time, that's, that's William, and, the, William the, and his men show up yes. to arrest her because Eliza told him. I don't know why part of the plan was to get caught, but okay. It, 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 she had, like, the, this whole thing, this is the, 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 the tenuous little note that, <laughs> that we, we kind of have to, like, you know, trust Eliza on, is Eliza realized that she would tell... Or, or, that Eliza realized that Margaret thought that she would tell... You know, William, William, where to go, which would be at the event. Oh, and, the par- and, yeah, Parliament. At yeah, Parliament. And so because Square. Parliament would have been evacuated, that's that's, that's the, where that's they, the they, That's right. They would evacuate the, to their gentlemen's club clubs. and she's going to, to blow, blow up the gentlemen's club. Yes. So two that's birds, right. one stone. So that's the plan. Yes. That was all the plan. The entire plan. <laughs> so Eliza was integral to this because if Eliza didn't tell William, then the whole the, plan would have Oh, that's true. The men would not apart. have... So locked like, out of parliament. And Margaret would have, the whole, the, the evacuation would have happened. Uh, the, the bomb would have been in the wrong place. Like mm-hmm. everything really, you know, it, Margaret's assessment of Eliza and, and that Eliza would just spill the beans. Sp- immediately. Immediately. Yeah. was like really pivotal to the whole plan. That's true. And yeah. then it didn't happen. Although it, it almost didn't. happened because like we, like at this point we're kind of like caught off guard. It's like because right at the last moment. Because <laughs> when, when Eliza came clean, clean to William, I was like, oh, well, they're going to go to Parliament and stop the bomb going off there. And that's when we're kind of like when we're at the Brownlee. That was a little bit of a Yeah. A leap. Well, they must have – my only assumption is that William is actually a very good detective and realized that this Brownlee club is the focus of her. I think Eliza was the one who figured that out. You think, I think so? I think so. Because he's the, what, he's the one that talks to the brother and found out about – this obsession, basically, that she's had since she was a child with this gentleman's club. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. This is this is why I I'm not good at mystery shows. I never know what's going on until the final well, reveal. This one, <laughs> I, I I sometimes am. Sometimes yeah. I'm not always. I'm not going to claim that I'm always. But like this was a bit of like a, a bit of a, a fake out for me because I was not expecting it to be the Brownlee as being. But the yeah. fact that when she, I think since Eliza's the one who's explaining. I, I thought, like, wasn't it that that, that 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 they would be leaving and going to the Brownlee? I thought that was like the reveal, and it's like, oh, okay, it's it's it makes sense because then okay. she takes out the Brownlee, which she that Margaret hates. I just took them she, at their word. Yeah, which, which is fine. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, 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 the Brownlee, which she does, she has a vendetta against this place. And as she's being carted off, she like accuses Eliza of of like being uh, might as well be working at a brothel because like, oh she's, yeah she compares her to a prostitute yeah. because she wants men to hire her and then hire her she's again. I'm like yes, that seeking, is how business works. <laughs> and, well, but she's also she, Eliza sees this in herself as well because she mm-hmm. is seeking like William's approval. She, yeah, like when he I'm, said well done earlier in the episode, she was like happy with she herself. was happy about that. And even her interactions with her dad, she realizes that she needs William as an ally. She needs to get his respect. Yeah. And so yeah, she is kind of there's not She's really a the good world. there's not really it's a not good approach. Though. Like there's not a fair approach to it. She's, she is just doing the best she can with the cards she's dealt. She's yes. trying to make a difference. Um but Essentially, Margaret tells her that she's selfish and only cares about herself. And I'm yeah. like, hello, do you want a mirror lady? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But th- that also hits home with Eliza yeah, as well. It does. As, yeah, everything you do is for yourself, no one else. Yeah. Like that is that is the accusation that Margaret throws as she's being like carted, carted off away. to jail for yep. trying to like murder people with a bomb. Right. So, I mean, it's <laughs> – For uh, trying to blow up a building. For perspective though. But like, yeah, William yeah. submits his report – 
Oh, well, William, I thought this was also interesting. William tells Eliza that Margaret doesn't know her. So he's basically saying, like, Oh, he's defending her, her character. Yes. You, you know, you're a good person. You're yeah. not doing that. She doesn't know. You're not a selfish person. He says, you cannot make people agree with you by killing them. I mean, we're not the French, which I thought was really cute. Because I'm just coming <laughs> dig, off dig Marie on Antoinette. The, <laughs> dig on the French there, yeah. We're not the French. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's clear that Eliza takes it to heart because... Um, well, at the end of the episode, we see we'll get we'll get to how Eliza takes it to heart, because at the end of the episode first, William's boss is like really impressed with his work on the case. He's like, this really shows initiative. Yes. And also <laughs> uh, asks for like, hey, uh, just make sure that you, the, the, the people that you're working with you're, uh, they, no. they know that, that how well they've done. Is yeah. there anyone that you would like to, to call out and recognize? Yes. And then like we do a cut. The, the scene cuts. So scene we cuts. never know. So we like, never, did I Will, doubt he did. Did William give credit? I doubt he did because well, we his boss. Boss seems really rude, so I don't know that he would actually out himself as not doing any of the work in this case and the work actually being done by a woman. Uh, he may have done some of the work, but the vast majority was yeah. definitely Eliza yeah. like, and, and Moses and so, just bringing the evidence, the cold, hard facts. We were, I worked with a woman and a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> was, yeah they deserve a shout out. <laughs> so I don't, we don't know. Can I get that promotion now? You know, yeah, can the, I get that promotion Going to the, the Irish, Irish division? division? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we don't we don't actually know. Maybe he maybe he did give credit to Eliza because he did hire her that's, to that's, infiltrate the women's group. So there is an opportunity. That's that's let up, let, that's him. let up to us as the the viewers. To, I mean, right to, now I'm saying no because yeah. William has not shown any sign that I'm going to I'm going to say person. I'm going to say yes because I'm just hoping because he's, hoping. He's, he's not very <laughs> nothing in this episode really has redeemed him. So it's my imagination that's hopefully you're like hope, filling in. Like you're, you're hopeful that he's <laughs> yes. redeeming himself yeah. behind closed behind doors. Behind closed doors. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, so then but we're yes. back. We're back so, with Eliza at home. Yes. We're back at, with Eliza. And uh, so she's taken Margaret's accusation to heart that she's not helping anybody by bettering her own role in the world. Yeah. And we see that she is teaching Ivy to read. And it's really touching. Ivy obviously feels very uncomfortable with anyone doting on her in any way or helping her learn things. She's self-conscious. She's like, I'll never remember, never remember all these vowels. She's like, yes, you will. You remember everything from my childhood. And she says something about uh, that's because you were so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Which, again, it really the, the dialogue in this show up to yeah. this point uh, is is so great. And just seeing the the interactions within the characters. That, that, that between Ivy and Eliza is is very touching. I love their relationship. Um, it's just, it's really sweet. And Ivy, obviously, she knows that Eliza cares because at the end, she kind of like smiles wistfully and like yeah, starts she, doing her, her lesson. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I love Ivy so much. And that's, and that's how the episode wraps up because yeah. like uh, Ivy's learning her letters. Yep. Um, and um, so we have that, it's that, a really soft close. I really like it. It's a soft it. close. There's there's a lot left unsaid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just kind of like just left left hanging there for the next episode. But, for, probably and well, and then, kind of. The next episode really has nothing to do with. Well, I, I yeah. Because the next episode is about ghost photography, if I remember. Oh, correctly. that's right. And and, and, they, and I'm excited they, about rewatching that. If one. you're watching this, they 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 promo it heavily in this. Oh yeah, <laughs> they, they, it has next on at the beginning of the episode. I'm like, and why are we watching the next one at the beginning of the episode on on passport? So I don't know if there's like so something got confused or what, but it's built in. Uh, so anyone watching this, listening to this right now, us speak about this. There's another episode, and it's got ghost photography. Ghost photography. And so hang yeah. on to postscript. <laughs> we'll talk so about excited. that one next. <laughs> so excited about that. So yeah, uh, any final thoughts about this episode? Uh, I, I just really like the themes in this episode. It, there are a few leaps uh, where you kind of like, uh, you're, uh, as a viewer, you're caught a little bit off guard. At least I was. Uh, and, uh, yes, I feel like there's a lot of leaps in every mystery show for me because yeah. I'm not good at connecting the dots. But this one specifically uh, felt like how did they make these yeah. connections so seamlessly? And I really appreciate And we didn't see any of that actually happening. <laughs> I, I really appreciate how this is laying like the – the foundation, the, the framework for Eliza and how she sees herself in the world, because we see that through how she imagines her father would interact with her. We see this with how like Margaret is like an extreme, like, Ver you know, well, an extreme version of. Yeah. 
yeah. what she dreams of the world. Like yes. She went about it the wrong way, but she believes in that same cause. And yeah. she it kind of helps her define herself where she is in the spectrum between like the extremist uh, views and then like how society is and how she wants to actually – be a part of it and kind of pushed for change. Yeah. But like she still has to work but, within the framework. But the how. Yeah. yeah because she she does say in this that she believes in the rule of law. Yeah. Even though she she's ha- arrested all the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, all the time. Every so episode. she doesn't believe in the stupid laws. <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep like a tally of how many times she's arrested. In the, in I think she, she probably gets arrested every episode, <laughs> every to episode. be honest. I, I, don't, I have not actually kept a tally, but she gets arrested a lot. Right. <laughs> well, then I, I, yeah. yeah. Do you have anything more to add as well? I mean, no, I mean, I I think that this episode has really emphasized why I hated William so much. <laughs> yeah, I would um, agree with that too. I hope. He, I, he does get better. Okay, that's uh, good to I know. But I can't remember when or if it's in this season. <laughs> All right. We'll see that now. Now the listeners, like, l- listeners to us right now. This is why I love Moses so much because <laughs> Moses is just like she wouldn't like you deciding things for Moses her. Moses seems like, to yeah. get Eliza uh, and and William one in the same. Balance. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and they are both part of like the lesser society. Yes. Like, so they have that in common. They're both trying to break free of society. Moses and Eliza. Yes. yes of the, of those restrictions. So I love, I love that relationship. I love that they're setting up the dynamics between William and Moses, that they don't like each other, that they're going to clash. They're definitely um, on each so other's that's radar. That's definitely something at this point. that they're both aware of. Yep. I'm both looking, of them are aware. I'm looking forward to the next episode. <laughs> I'm still really enjoying the series. Um, I thank you very much for listening, yes, for watching. You. Uh, you, again, if you want to watch along with us, you can watch through PBS Passport. You can go to your local PBS station to do that. And if you like us, you can please like and subscribe to uh, WI, what, what is it? Mosaic. Yeah. So it's youtube.com slash at symbol W-I-T-F, WITF Mosaic. Yeah. So you can find our videos there. Or if you prefer just listening to us, which I prefer because I feel like I'm an awkward turtle on camera, you <laughs> can <fine>. subscribe <laughs> to our podcast uh, on just about anywhere you listen to podcasts at WITF.org slash postscript. It's a lot of P words to remember. It is. So, yeah, we'll see you next time uh, when we talk about episode four. Yeah, thank you. And it, uh, uh, we'll see you next time. See you. <laughs>